My name is Zed. You're all here because you're the best of the best. Marines, Air Force, Navy SEALs, Army Rangers, NYPD. And we're looking for one of you. Just one. What will follow is a series of simple tests for motor skills, concentration, stamina. I see we have a question. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe you already answered this. But, uh, why exactly are we here? Son? Second Lieutenant Jake Jensen, West Point, graduate with honors. We're here because you're looking for the best of the best of the best, sir. <laughs> What's so funny, Edwards? <laughs> Your boy Captain America over here. <laughs> the best of the best of the best, sir. <laughs> yeah, with honors. <laughs> You know, he's just really excited, and he has no clue why we're here. <laughs> that's just, that's very funny to me. <laughs> Y'all ain't laughing, though. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to the Minimalistic Muslim Podcast, episode 5. This is your host, Faisal Rahman, and with me is... Iman Rahman, your co-host. How you doing, Iman? I'm okay, alhamdulillah. You? Alhamdulillah, it's been... Uh... It was a long week. It's been a long week. I've actually seen this very fast, I guess. Really? Yeah. I think I haven't really been doing much this week, so. Okay. It, it, just, it just seems really fast. No more Michael Mopogo books then? No, I finished that. Yeah. I you finished to, all of them? I need to get another book. Um, I'm looking at the, you know, the crime and the mystery, that kind yeah. of genre. Yeah, I like that. So Is there anything that tickles your fancy in terms of author? author? I don't really know. I'm just starting to get into books now, mm-hmm. so I think later on I'll, you know, have a gist of what author I would, you know, look into and that kind of stuff. But right now, not so much. I'm just okay. looking at books that seem interesting or okay. like recommended books. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay, so Iman, before we kick off this um, this week's podcast, mm-hmm. just want to have a uh, a few announcements. Basically, firstly, a big shout out to everybody and a big thank you. We uh, we went. Although, I mean, we launched three three podcasts, yeah, three yeah. episodes, but we've kind of officially gone live um, with the website and yeah, Google and uh, all the other podcasting um, streaming services. Yep. Um, and we've had very good responses. That's good. You know? So alhamdulillah, you know, it seems just like there are people out there who are enjoying this content mm-hmm. um, and uh, are finding it beneficial. So alhamdulillah, jazakallah khairan for that. Um, I have said that if any of you feel like you want to suggest anything towards the show, what you need to do is head over to the website, which is www.minimalisticmuslim.com. And uh, if you go to the contact page, you can email um, us thoughts and uh, any feedback that you, you may have or want mm-hmm. or want me to talk about with Iman um, with future episodes. So a quick thank you. Jazakallah uh, khairan for your support. What I need you to do, though, because what I am noticing is that a large number of listeners are listening via the website. Mm. So, you know, you can pull up all the stats and you can see how many people are listening. So, alhamdulillah, that's brilliant. But what I need you to do is for those of you who have an Apple device, um, is to, if you can, play it through the uh, Apple iTunes. podcast, yeah, yeah. I- iTunes. Because what it is, I think Apple is the largest platform for podcasting. podcasting. Kind of stuff, yeah. So, what it does is it ranks better. Yeah. But uh, alhamdulillah, very, very uh, pleased with the, in the short span of time. Yeah. This is episode five. Yeah. Right, yeah. So the feedback that we've been getting. So uh, excellent. Uh, what was the other thing I needed them to do? What else? I, you didn't say Subscribe. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So again, when you hit the website, subscribe. Um, and that way you can stay in tune with uh, when the new episodes are being launched and uh, you'll be emailed to notify. Okay. Fantastic. So let's jump in to this week's podcast, which is all about Annalise Kritik. That's how you say it. Where's he from? <laughs> Where do you think that's from? Annalise Kritik. Uh, maybe my accent. Annalise Kritik. Italian. No, that's it. Yeah, I did that no, wrong. No. <laughs> okay, what about Annalise Kritik? French? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, what does that mean in French? I don't know. No guesses. I, I've never studied French. So. <laughs> well, what's our podcast about? Okay. Um, I'm going to be a little bit embarrassed. You said it so many times. I, I just, it's gone out of my brain. Critical. 
Thinking. Thinking. There you go. Critique. Oh, Crit- yeah. <laughs> All right, there you go. So we're talking about critical thinking. Why did I say it in French? Uh, did it start from there? Like, no. Uh, it got popular? Have, have you ever seen that statue? There's a statue of a guy. Who's thinking? Who's on a stone yeah, thinking. thinking. All right, it's called the thinker. The, the name of yeah, the statue is, is called National the thinker. It's, um, it's in France. Oh. I'm not sure if it was sculpted by a french guy yeah maybe but as it's in france i thought i'd introduce it in french <laughs> so apologies to all those french listeners out there my french isn't that fantastic but i did try <laughs> okay yeah so um actually mm. before we talk about or dive into critical thinking okay do you like riddles yeah okay yeah. is it hard it's a hard one what it's, it's Okay. See if you can work it out. Go but on. Enjoy it, yeah? Yep. Okay. So let's start off by a riddle. Really? <laughs> You've got to set the scene, right? <laughs> All right. So you're in a dark room. Okay. You wake up. Something it's like <laughs> <laughs> you're in a dark room and you wake up. Okay. Right. You wake up in a dark room. Okay. All you can see is the light of a candle. Mm-hmm. All right, see that? Like the candle? Okay. All right. Okay. In the room, there are three doors. Okay. Only one will has a tunnel behind it. Okay. Two doors have a brick wall behind it. Okay. You have one key. Okay. That one key yep. will allow you to open all the doors. However, mm-hmm. you can only choose one door. Okay. How do you know which door to, uh, to open? Okay. Spooky. Okay, something to do with the candle then, isn't it? So... What is it? I don't know. Maybe because there's light on the other side. You sw- you take out the candle, maybe there's something through the you know the bottom of the door. Mm-hmm. It's like light, because you said it's a tunnel, right? Mm-hmm. So there's light underneath the door, so you can see. So you're saying you'd put the I'll candle take, at the bottom of the door? No, I'll take the light, the candle out and you, see on the other side if there's any light coming through. You've lost me. Okay, so you've got a candle, right? Yeah. So there's light in the room. No, the d- room is dark. But you've got a candle, so there's... Yeah, so there's a l- bit of a light. Bit of a yeah. light. So I would take that out anyway. If you take the light it out, out. It'd, be, it'd be dark. You can't see anything. You can't see anything through, under the... Like, you know, for example, let's say someone's going downstairs to oh, eat. Oh, no, 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 no. Something. Okay. Did I say it's a tunnel? So it's an entry, It's an exit, but you can't see. Okay, fine then. So, let's think again. Um... Tuck, tick tock. Tick tock. Um. Okay, I, I actually don't know. You were quite close. Was I? Yeah. It was to do with taking the candle out, right? So you got two doors with brick walls. One mm. door with a tunnel. Mm. That's the door that leads you out. Mm. But you can only choose one mm. door. I d- burn the doors. Again. I don't know. You burn the doors. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that could, well, that could work. I don't know. But now, in this riddle, what yeah. you would do okay, go on. is mm. you take your candle, mm-hmm. you'd hold it up to the keyhole, mm-hmm. and if there's a draft that comes through the keyhole and you see the candle oh. move, you know there's air behind there, in which case there's a tunnel or there's space. Okay. Whereas if you went to the other ones with a concrete wall or a wall, yeah. it wouldn't do it anything. Wouldn't do anything. That's actually clever. Ta-ta. Wow. I didn't think of it like that. Well, you need to work on your critical thinking, love. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So that was a nice little introduction to our topic today, which is all about critical thinking. So let me get you started by thinking about, thinking about <laughs> this. Everyone thinks, right? Yep. It's what you do as a person. Right. Okay. It's what makes you different from, I guess, the animal kingdom. Yeah. But much of your thinking if you leave it to itself, like thinking just for the sake of thinking, okay. bear with me, okay? <laughs> yeah. Is often quite biased, distorted, probably partial and ill-informed because it's stuff that you have experienced right. without any sort of... Other people's opinions. Yeah, so it's okay. how you're viewing things. So you're seeing it in your one-sided kind of okay. existence, right? Yeah, it seems more and more people today don't really care 
about how information is processed to where it comes from. It was George Bernard Shaw, an Irish playwright, who actually isn't, he's quite buried in nearby, you know. Really? Yeah, in the same county. Oh, okay. Um, he said, 2% of people think. Okay. 3% of people think they think. Okay. And 95% of people would rather die than think. All right. Okay. If I was to give like a modern interpretation, mm -hmm. I would kind of say that the 2% are people who are... Changing the world and that kind of view. Well, it says think. Two people, people, people think, right? Okay. So I would say the minority, which is the 2%, are people who take an idea or take an opinion and really think about the source. Is it relevant? Does it make sense? And critique it. Criti you know, could be criticized okay okay three percent of people who think they think will probably be other people who consume information from the newspapers possibly the television the news and all of that okay, okay. So, using so, your own... yeah so they're still getting an idea but it's kind of biased or can be if okay. it's a news station or depends who the owners are or a newspaper right. again depends who the owners are yeah all right and 95 percent so the vast majority of people are quite happy plodding through life without thinking anything. Just get up in the morning, go to work, come home, spend a bit of time watching TV, go to sleep. Right. So although they know what's going on, they don't really pay much attention to what's happening. Yes, that's second aging. Kind of so thing. a lot of people he's saying are people who, ra who would rather die than think. So they're not literally there, <laughs> but can't be bothered with all of the, the effort it takes to work something out and really look into it into depth, mm. which the 2% would probably do. So, with this saying, the question comes, mm -hmm. how did we get here? Where? In terms of thinking. Oh, okay. So, we've come from a place in history, when you look at history and thinkers, that people used to ponder a lot. Yeah. So, now we've got to a statistic by George Bernard Shaw saying that a lot of people don't think, don't want to think, and all of that, right? Okay. So, how did we get here? Um, people start thinking for us, I guess. Or maybe because Interesting. of routine. Or because you're doing stuff every day, like how you said with work, mm -hmm. like a normal routine for school or for work, it it doesn't really require for thinking. It's just more of like a, a memory thing. Like it, your body knows you should wake up at a certain time, then go to work at a certain time, know what you're doing at work, and then coming back home. So there's nothing really more to think about. And it could be, I mean, maybe it's to do with, I don't know, um, artificial intelligence. Like most of it is doing stuff for us. Like you know how Google Home, yeah, Amazon things, yeah. right? So now, like, people are putting, like, oh, hey, okay, Google, can you please put this Good. and that on my list okay. or something? interesting. So they're using intelligence to, you know, in the ways that it will help people, but it makes us a little bit more lazy, so we don't okay. actually have to think. The robots are doing the thing. Do you know what? I, I enjoy the answer. Okay. It's probably, we're going to hit this further down the line. Right. Uh, but if I take it back to its grassroots, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Let me ask the listeners a question. You guys can think this at home as well. Can you remember a time in your life where you were taught how to think? Let me repeat that. Okay. Okay. Can you remember a time in your life where you were taught how to think? No. <laughs> all right. Just let that settle in your head. Okay. So all of this thinking's going on. All right. I think just thinking came to people naturally. Like, just because of, as you get older, you get more experience. Okay, let's break it down. Like. Let's break it down. So you're saying you weren't taught how to think? No, it just okay. came to me. <laughs> I think a lot of people, if they're honest with themselves, would say the same thing. But let's see. Maybe school taught you how to think. Okay. Maybe college taught you how to think. Never been there. For those of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to go. For those of you who are, well, you're still quite young. I know yeah. I am, yeah. For those of you who want to go to university, maybe university taught you how to think. But hold on. These are institutions that teach you what to think, not how to think. Deep. Okay. I came across an article. Mm -hmm. um, tell me what you think of this. Go on. It said, of all the challenges we face today, Mm-hmm. There may be none more pressing than people losing their ability for critical thinking. 
we have an entire education system designed to tell people what to think and how to memorize data, teaching how to think has fallen by the wayside. What do you think? What do you think? What do I think? Uh, yeah, so I think I quite agree with that because now no one really, yeah, as you said, not a lot of people think like how they used to think before back in the day. Look, think, think about what I just said. When, when and who taught you how to think? Like who, who does that? We go to school. Yeah. Well, they're saying that the, it starts from the education system. It could probably happen at home. Do this, don't do this, don't yeah. do this. Why? They say an average child, I don't know if the stats are right on this, but they say they ask about 300 questions a day. Oh. A three-year-old, for example. Yeah. Why, 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 why? You know, you get the why, why, why? <laughs> yeah. oh, be quiet. Da, 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 da. 300, 300 questions. By the time you're an adult, you probably ask one or two. <laughs> Do you see the transition? Yeah. Like when you're young, you're naturally, now no one's taught you to ask those questions. So that means that we designed critical thinkers. Like when we're born, we think like that. Why this? Why that? Why not? Why this? Why this? Yeah. And it's only when you ask the questions why that you know that you're learning, right? Yeah. Sometimes as parents... We don't like to hear all those questions, but it just goes to show you by the time you're an adult, you kind of ask one or two questions. Mm. That's, that's kind of scary. Yeah, I guess all right? so. But like look, listen. Everyone's satisfied with what they know now. They don't really ask ah, questions. Ah, possibly. Yeah. But look, all this talk about thinking mm -hmm. may be getting you tired and hungry, in which case you may just want to sit down on your couch. Binge watch your favorite Netflix series with a tub of cookie dough ice cream cookie dough ice cream and all you can do is just wait for the marketing gurus to tell you what you need to consume after all they've been telling you since you were a kid right i think i'm having a morpheus moment in one <laughs> <laughs> morpheus from the movies have you seen that movie um i've heard of it before you've not seen it no you've not seen it no <laughs> <laughs> write that down on your watch list oh yeah, yeah okay back to the subject Critical thinking. So why do you think it sounds so serious? Some people, when you say critical thinking, they go, critical thinking? No, thank you. Mm. Why? Because... Like, cause Does it sound know. scary? I mean, it sounds intense. Like, you have to learn how to critically think. Right. But when you say, when someone says critical thinking, do you think it's negative? No. I think it, right. it would be like something that everyone should have as a, you know, a normal, you know, what would you call it? Like something under your belt that you can do. Like mm -hmm. everyone should be able to think critically. Very good. Yeah. Not everyone should think rationally, I guess. They should or they shouldn't? They should. There's, there's times when you can mm -hmm. and it's good to, but most of the time now how when we live, mm -hmm. I feel like you should always think before you do things because maybe without you knowing, mm -hmm. you'll make an outcome that isn't really beneficial or okay. make, make things worse or something. See, I mean, I like the way you're thinking because you are thinking quite critically. <laughs> But a lot of people out there mm. don't think that critical, <laughs> critical thinking yeah. has a negative connotation. It's something that's negative oh, because okay. it has the word critical in there, oh, right? Okay. They probably think, oh, this is negative, right? right? But in actual fact, it's not negative. It actually teaches you how to independently think by asking, as that child does, questions. And that allows you to formulate your understanding. Do you remember what I used to say to you? What did you say? To what I used to say to you about? I mean, you said a lot of things to me. If you can, if you can repeat something back to me. Oh, okay. So if, for example, when, when I was once stuff, yeah. yeah, once you taught me something, you would always tell me to say what I've said. Like, what do you understand from it? Right. Yeah. Not like, like, not as in give it back to me it, as yeah. yeah. Explain okay. it better so that it shows that you understand it. Understand it. Right. Yeah. So it's only when you can actually, I believe that you know you have you've consumed information. You can then relay that information as according to how you've understood it shows you that yeah okay this is my understanding of of what you've explained to me yeah but look over the last decade or so we've had an overload of information via the internet okay and a lot of the times on the internet it's very commercial so there are reasons why you see certain ads when you watch youtube there are certain reasons why you know you go out and you see certain billboards yeah showing you what to wear what to eat yeah. and all of that okay people are spending billions companies are spending billions on all of this but in order to critically think you need to consciously kind of unplug from all of this okay all right and that's not an easy thing yeah, to do how would you? all right that's not that's not an easy thing to do it's almost like it's like training yourself you're going to see certain things but you have to consciously make an effort where you have to think no 
you see an, I don't know, a food logo. Yeah. No, I don't want to eat from there. You see a certain clothing line. No, I don't need to. I don't, I don't want to buy that. You have to be that self-conscious on yourself to think. Because like I said, they spent millions of money, companies, you know, trying to work out the psychology of you. Yeah. And if you're not able to think what it is that you enjoy, you like, then you'll fall as putty into their hands. Mm. And it makes their job easy and your job hard. The other thing is by not critically thinking, you rely on what to formulate your decisions. Do you remember when I said sometimes it can be biased right at the beginning? Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of the times your your opinions are formulated by either the media, mm. the culture of, of where you're coming from, yeah. the society you live in, and your friends. Okay, I agree. So if you guys all play Fortnite, for example, that's that's what you're going to be talking about, yeah? Mm. If you belong to a culture from Southeast Asia, for example, you're going to have a commonality. Your thinking may be yeah, the same yeah, as yeah. those people from that part yeah, of town, right? So it's, it's like that. Yeah. Bringing it closer to home, I'll give you an example. Brexit. Okay. All right. Now, without getting political, Brexit was kind of sold to the masses um, on the idea that we've got mass immigration coming to this country mm. and we need to control it, control the borders. All right? Yeah. And a lot of people got behind that one ideology. All right? And there's one political party that created momentum just on that one narrative yeah now today when well, it's not today today but years like we're now 2019 right yeah when well, you've got something like brexit extended to 2020 now yeah and in between in between you've had so many deadlines and have been right there. yeah but and also people have now got to understand that was it just about immigration Businesses are looking and saying, we're going to get hit. You've got all of these other industries that are going to get hit. Travel is going to get affected. The food on your table will get expensive. All of these things, the intricate details of what would happen if you leave the EU wasn't explained, in my opinion, as best as it should. But what was is a narrative to get everyone emotionally involved and saying they're coming to take your jobs. Mm. All right? Yes, they use them. Yeah, 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 I get what you mean. Yeah. And it's this and this kind of thinking that the 95% of people fall into. Yeah, if I was to use George Bernard Shaw's state statement, they hear something from a person they like, they don't analyze it, they don't break it, they don't check it, they accept it for what it is, and they're like, yes. This is what's going on. So who's formulating your opinion or these kinds of people? The media. Yeah. You've got uh, a nation of fake news. Have you heard that term fake news? Yep. All right. Many times. Okay. So what's your understanding of fake news? Fake news is basically, I guess it's in the name. It's just um, certain kind of media who exaggerate what mm -hmm. is actually going on. So it may, it may have some truth to it, but okay. they just exaggerate it to maybe scare some people. Yeah or to like twist it to make it benefit them or that kind of stuff. So they don't say the actual truth basically. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I agree. That's exactly what it is, right? So what happens is what a lot of problems people are facing is that when they look to your mainstream media, let's say, yeah, they find a specific narrative that suits a specific kind of person. Mm. And they would then say, all right, that's what's happening in the world. But alternatively now, because of the internet, yeah. You're now getting a different flip side of the coin. You're getting a different perspective, a different opinion. And now people are thinking, hold on, this is saying here, and this is happening. What's, which one is the truth? Mm. And you've got people spurting it out. Oh, that's fake. That's fake. Like, like anything, nothing means nothing no more. Right. Everything's just fake. Yeah, yeah, that's fake. That's fake. And we're going to come to that. The, the big one was, um, you're going to be too young to remember this, but the Iraq war. Yeah, you know? Yeah. So you had the Iraq war, and we were told Saddam Hussein, you know, weapons of mass destruction can blow up America in six seconds or something crazy. Right. All right. And everyone's, yeah, da, 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 he's got this and boom, they wrecked the country, mm. found nothing. Mm. All right. Now, not going to get into all the conspiracies, but it just goes to show, even though in this country, one million people took to the streets to protest against the war. Yeah. What was done? 
you know mm. people's voices yeah. weren't heard so just yeah so they just acted on one person's yeah. thing yeah all right so that's that bring it closer to bring it closer to yourself mm. when you went to school right all right or even if you look at the schooling system you go to school as you go through the stages you qualify in a subject you get a job you're taught when you get a job you can do this you can live here you can earn that right, right? Yeah. you're so you're sold a dream you're, you're being ta already taught where you need to go yeah and you know and that in itself is a way to kind of get you in the box like these are your opportunities that you're going to get no, no there's nothing you saying uh, there's um there's nothing wrong in you thinking to yourself or saying to yourself no i want to create my opportunities and that's what people are doing yeah all right you don't have to go down this route and that's what opening your mind is about that's what opening you know thinking and criticizing and being objective is all about so you can be one of those movers and shakers right mm. now coming back to a bit of politics okay you had donald trump okay my favorite guy <laughs> right six months ago right i think it was on the one of the american shows kimmy kimmy jr which Kimmy, one? Jimmy Fallon, there's like Kimmy. Kimmy, that one. Is I there think. a Kimmy? I don't remember. Kimmy one. I think it's the talk show host with a beard, yeah? Okay, yeah. A lot of them do. <laughs> Something Fallon. Is it Jimmy him? Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. I don't think it's, it could be Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, there's, right. there's a Ki I, I don't remember. All right, so one of them did a report. And about two years ago, he said Donald Trump has, I think it's, Donald Trump was like six months into his administration. And they said he's already... And this was official reports. Um, been Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. I think it was that. Okay, probably. Yeah. Yeah, probably. So, yeah. So, a, a couple of years ago, he kind of said that Donald Trump has now said his, and these are official figures, 2,000th lie. Okay? okay. And he does this little video on showing you. Right, what he's said. What, not, not exactly everything, but just kind of snippets. Snippets, yeah. All right? Yeah. Um, but he's done a lot of backtracking, okay? So he's gone out and he won his vote on that. Mm. Found the Muslims, we need to build a wall with Mexico. Remember all of that rubbish yeah. going on, yeah? And um, now, six months ago, so I went a couple of years ago, six months ago, the same guy right. has re re done another little show saying he's now been, uh, official figures say that he's now said his 10,000th wow. lie. Wow. Okay. So I want to play wow. something. Tell me what you think. I stand before you as a representative of the American people to deliver a message of friendship and hope and love. We'll find out who really knocked down the World Trade Center because they have papers in there that are very secret. You may find it's the Saudis. Yesterday we signed historic agreements with the Kingdom that will invest almost $400 billion in our two countries and create many hundreds of thousands of jobs in America and Saudi Arabia. Hillary takes all of this money into a crooked foundation, crooked Hillary, crooked foundation, from Saudi Arabia and from many other countries where they enslave women. Young Muslim boys and girls should be able to grow up free from fear, safe from violence, and innocent of hatred. A total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. This is not a battle between different faiths, different sects, or different civilizations. I want surveillance of these people. I want surveillance of certain mosques, okay? For many centuries, the Middle East has been home to Christians, Muslims, and Jews living side by side. We must practice tolerance and respect for each other once again. I didn't like that when the World Trade Center came down, the scum that knocked it down sent their families all back to Saudi Arabia and then we attack Iraq. I also promise that America will not seek to impose our way of life on others, but to outstretch our hands in the spirit of cooperation and trust. We have to start by keeping people out because these people they got something bad going on up there. There you go. Okay. So what I just got was everything he just said contradicts like 
<laughs> right. So you just got a snippet of of him saying things, and then uh, what he's saying is he's like you said he's contradicting. Yeah. What he said now, he's known. There's got many videos on YouTube, mm. and it's got quite comical. Yeah. But the sad thing is, that just tells you our state of play. That like we've elected these people as our leaders who can say anything and then just backtrack and then say the complete opposite. Yeah. And it's okay. These are leaders. Yeah. All right. And you're like, they're, you know, you, you look at consequences or you look at things like that and you're thinking, well, so anyone can say anything, especially world leaders, and get away with all of this stuff. Right. Yeah. Do you think he's aware? There's something for him. Aware right? of. Of about what I'm about to say. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you think Donald Trump is aware that in the highest court in the US, mm -hmm. which is called the Supreme Court, okay. there's a freeze, not as in a ice freeze type freeze, yeah. but another kind of freeze, a freeze um, in the sense of it's, I have to Google this, right? <laughs> but a freeze is also known as a broad horizontal sculpture or painting or decoration on the wall. Okay. okay. So a horizontal picture, horizontal painting or yeah. sculpture on a wall. So right? that's called a freeze. So that's what it is. Okay. In the US uh, Supreme Court, mm -hmm. there is one of these, of which there are 19 historical figures mm -hmm. who have been tributed to be one of history's yeah. greatest lawgivers. Mm -hmm. One of them mm -hmm. is the Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No way. Yeah. I did actually, I did not know that. There you go. In okay. America as yeah. well. In the Supreme Court the, of Law. Exactly. All right. Donald Trump's not up there, right? Is he up there? Who? Donald Trump. No, 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 Good. no. So, <laughs> so you've got people like Moses. Oh, okay. All right. And you have other people. I can't remember their names, but Prophet Muhammad is on there. there. Okay. And it just goes to show all of this bigotry and hatred against Muslims. And yet, when you look and define the fa very fabric of which America is made in its principles, the Prophet Muhammad has been attributed, you know, yeah, greatest le um, lawgivers in history. Lawgivers. All right? Lawgivers. Crazy, right? Yeah. And this is in America, where all this hatred and like exactly. said, against all Muslims is coming from. Not for all Americans, but... Absolutely. Again, not Americans, but the actual leader. All right? Yeah. You know what's scary? Okay, no. <laughs> it's just looking to the future now, right? All right, yeah. Deep fake. Okay. Deep I've fake heard, videos? I've heard of them before. Okay. Remember the videos I showed you where they take someone's face? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah put yeah. it on someone else's face. And you can't tell the difference at all? No, because the computer has rendered your face onto someone else's. Yeah. And they can get you to say... Whatever they want. They want. Yeah. Well, basically, well, at the moment, what it is is, for example, let's say you have an impersonator. Right. All right and they will impersonate a person's voice. Yeah. And then they'll just attach, because they're doing the voice, they'll yeah. attach the face on that person. Mm. So it's like he's doing it. So, for example, I do a really crap Arnold Schwarzenegger impression. <laughs> no, <laughs> not now. All right. So, and if that, if that technology was there. Yeah, they can make your they face. They could just there. put my face in there. So when I say, <laughs> get to the chopper, <laughs> do it now. All right. Okay. They could just take that and put it on my face. And right. I could be like a... You know, yeah, you're right? a now, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, that was a tribute to Hamdan, actually. I'll tribute that to Hamdan, because he likes it when I do the impersonation. Okay. Um, what's more scary is, okay, so that technology is available. What if they can, they can play with your voice? So now they can make you sound, they can make you look like someone, yeah. and now they can make you sound, and so you can say whatever they want you to say, all because of computer algorithms. That's really scary. Right. So where I'm going with this is that if we rely on media sources with the internet and all of that going at an all-time high, everyone's consuming that kind of information, I can now make you look like whoever I want you to look like and sound like and get you to say something which you didn't say. Wow. So now it's going to be so... It's like what... Do you remember that saying by Malcolm X? I don't know if you came across this, re, um, this quote. Mm. He said that the media have the power to make the innocent look guilty mm. yeah, and, and the, the guilty look innocent. innocent yeah. All right. Where now that was a long time ago. That's well. written. So he's saying in writing, yeah. but now visually you can see it. You're going to be able to yeah. find it very difficult to look at someone and think 
is that that person? Mm. Did he just say that? Or did she just say that? And this is the problem. And this is, you know, if we just consume data without critiquing it, looking at it, analyzing it, breaking it down. All right. Yeah. Okay. The, just to give you some references now with critical thinking and coming over to our tradition. Okay. There was a guy called Michael, I think Michael Hart. Okay, okay. who um, in 1978 mm -hmm. published a book called The 100 Greatest Influential People in History. Okay? Okay. And he wrote 100 people mm -hmm. and his reasons as to why. So he critiqued everything. Yeah. Looked at history and what did they do? And What made them so great? Yeah. Right. Okay. So it wasn't hearsay. It wasn't so-and-so said so. It's his analysis, his breakdown, and he gives his reasons why. So what Michael Hart nominated for his book as number one okay. most influential person in history yeah. was the Prophet Muhammad so this is the first one? yeah wow, alhamdulillah okay, here's his reasons he says, and I quote my choice of Muhammad to lead the list of the world's most influential persons may surprise some readers and may be questioned by others but he was the only man in history who was supremely successful on both <laughs> The religious and secular level that's coming from a non-muslim exactly that's coming from someone who's critiqued looked yeah. at his life looked at um his legacy so to speak and the thing is a lot of muslims are proud when his name is mentioned when michael j hart explains this but we still need to produce people who can critique in a way which can kind of really deliver in today's day and age what the prophet stood for how he did things as opposed to always being on the defensive okay right, yeah i've got another guy for you ever heard of a guy called gandhi yeah <laughs> i think everyone's heard of Mahatma Gandhi, <laughs> okay. right? yeah this is what he said i wanted to know the best of the life of the one who holds today an undisputed sway over the hearts of millions of mankind I became more than ever convinced that it was not the sword that won a place for Islam in those days in the scheme of life. It was the rigid simplicity, the utter self-effacement of the Prophet, the scrupulous regard for pledges, his intense devotion to his friends and followers, his intrepidity, his fearlessness, his absolute trust in God and his own mission. These and not the sword carried everything before them and surmounted every obstacle. When I closed the second volume of the Prophet's biography, I was sorry there was not more for me to read of this great life. There's another one. I started off with um, Sir, jo Sir George Bernard Shaw. Um, he has quoted in saying, I have always held the religion of Muhammad in high estimation because of its wonderful vitality. It is the only religion which appears to me to possess that assimilating capacity to the changing phase of existence which can make itself appeal to every age. I have studied him, the wonderful man, and in my opinion, for from being an antichrist, we should say I think this should say far from being an antichrist, he must be called the savior of humanity. A um, couple more: Thomas Carlyle, the lies which well-meaning zeal has heaped around this man are disgraceful to ourselves only, and. We'll have quite a few actually. The personality of this is by Professor Ram Krishna Roy. The personality of Muhammad, it is most difficult to get into the whole truth of it. Only a glimpse of it I can catch. What a dramatic succession of picturesque scenes. There is Muhammad the prophet, there is Muhammad the warrior, Muhammad the businessman, Muhammad the statesman, Muhammad the orator. Muhammad the reformer, Muhammad the refuge of orphans, Muhammad the protector of slaves, Muhammad the emancipator of women, Muhammad the judge, Muhammad the saint, all in all these magnificent roles, in all these departments of human activities, he is like a hero. And I'll do one more. Reverend Bosworth Smith. He was Caesar and Pope in one, but he was Pope without the Pope pretensions. And Caesar without the legions of Caesar, without a standing army, without a bodyguard, without a palace, without a fixed revenue, 
If ever any man had the right to say that he ruled by a right divine, it was Muhammad, for he had all the power without its instruments and without its supports. <laughs> the love big words. This is just critiquing. This is looking at history, yeah. analyzing history, and then formulating an opinion. Okay? Yeah. You've got people today, such as a lady called Leslie Hazelton, who I believe is a Jewish atheist, mm -hmm. Karen Armstrong, who are historians, but who are reviving certain ideas um, and going back to earlier sources and re explaining Islam, Muslims, and the Prophet to the world. Oh, okay? Yes, and they've they've done it in a reputable way where these are reputable people who yeah. are now saying this kind of stuff all right mm -hmm. and it's interesting i'll put links on the on the show notes so you can visit them as well but my question is the west is producing this exactly all right Wesley. you've got non-muslims producing this you've got a handful of muslims who are doing such a thing yeah mm. but it's only and and this is why you would um not be convinced, but you would appreciate these people who go out their way to study our faith and bring out gems to us and we get all excited, yes. Yeah. But hold on a second, they've critiqued it to such a manner to say, listen, this is our reasons. And it, to, you know, when you read that, it's like, wow. Yeah. Right? There was, um, I don't know if you've read it, we've got it, The Seer of the Prophet written by Martin Lings. I haven't read it. I, I mean, I, I remember having that yeah. book, but I've never read it. Today, in Britain, mm. it's considered one of the most, because it goes back to early references, but the way Martin Lynx, who later reverted to Islam, okay, I think his name was Abu Bakr Siraj, okay. um, speaks and writes the history and the context of the Prophet and the time and everything to the detail. Yeah. It's considered, a, you know, one of the best Sira books for English-speaking people. Okay. All right. So again, it's it's showing that people have gone and not just taken information what they've been told and then written about it, but gone away and done the research themselves, analyzed it, critiqued it, and then put it in front of the world and said, these are our reasons as to why. Yeah. Okay. So it's not objective. It's actually thinking about. No, it is objective. Oh, I mean subjective. Yeah, sorry. exactly. So it is objective. It is looking at everything, all the parameters and thinking, there you go. Yeah. All right. So what you do is you, you gain a lot of respect. So now coming over to our tradition, when you read the Quran, some verses that you may come across, and Allah says in the Quran that some are plain and simple, okay? Yeah. And some are not so much, all right? The categories the scholars have derived for these two is one's called uh, Muhkamat, mm -hmm. which is the plain and simple. Okay. Like the night and the day, yeah. okay? You can't really argue over those things. And there's one called Mutashah okay. Bihat. And that needs to be interpreted. All right. right? So scholars would have technically gone back and gone back. Like, yeah, yeah. You would they would have analyzed exactly that's yeah. the word. They would have analyzed these verses. What is God trying to tell us? Mm. And derived a meaning from that and, and given it to the layman, people like me and you. Yeah. Okay. You can see this in our tradition that you know, when you have the four Imams, uh why and although great respect amongst them all four, there were certain times where they differed with an opinion of each other. Okay? Okay. Again, the same thing. They critiqued something. They felt that, no, this means this, and that means that. And although there weren't very big changes, more to do with jurisprudence and the legal system and law, mm -hmm. it was a interpretation. How did they get to that interpretation? They read the Quran, they read the tradition, then they used their aql. Though this is what I'm, this is what I'm taking from this. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have that, which shows that again, it's in our tradition. Yeah. But my question is this: If critical thinking is so important, and we are told to, and and I'm saying that we should be critical of things. Yeah. Then how come the fire didn't burn Ibrahim alayhi salam? Why didn't the whale eat Yunus alayhi salam? And why didn't the sea drown Musa a.s.? If we criticize this in yeah. a critical mind and think, hold on, fire burns. Yeah. Ibrahim was thrown in it. He didn't burn. That doesn't make sense. Something not right. Right. Okay. I'm going with this. The whale 
eaten by uh, the, each unit. Okay, and die. Yeah. But he doesn't. The sea. You would drown, yeah. Too much but he doesn't. All right. So this is where logic would say, hold on a second, we've exactly, got a problem yeah, here. Logical. Okay. So how does a Muslim or how do you interpret this? How do we deal with this without it conflicting mm. your faith? Will it just be believing the tawakal? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're coming to the right point. Basically, as a Muslim, you have a default position. Okay. All right. When we say we accept Allah and we're Muslims, we accept certain things without question. Yeah. So if someone says, show me Allah, you can't show Allah, right? Mm -hmm. These are beliefs. This is a matter of faith now. Mm -hmm. I believe. All right. So your faith is the reason as to why you're believing. Yeah. Now, there are certain things like angels. You can't see them. Jin, thing you can't see them, but you know of them. It's your belief that says, I believe. Yes. All right. So once you have certain elements of faith, the second part of our default position is reason. That's where we're now where we think upon it. So once we have established our faith, mm. we then let loose with reason. Yeah. Okay. So we don't we, we, we don't deal with um No, you just have to believe in that, sir, basically. So as an example, there was a Sahabi by the name of Al Huba bin Al Munthir. Anhu, who at the time of the Battle of Badr came to the Prophet and the Prophet gave a strategy of war. And I'm paraphrasing here, okay? Mm -hmm. And Al Khubab listened and then he said to the Prophet, Is this from you or is this from Allah? Okay? So he says, the first question, he's, he's questioning the Prophet. Yeah. What you're saying to me now, is this from you or is this a revelation? If it's a revelation, we hear and we obey. If this is from you, then we have an issue. So the Prophet says, no, this is from me. And then he, he gave a suggestion to say, I, suge I think we should be doing this. Okay. What do we learn from this? What do you learn from this? Um, I guess people, like the prophet still was a human i guess he wasn't a god so he would obviously he still does make a few mistakes so then like for example like how he said with allah there's no you know he's never wrong he mm. knows what he's doing you know and with the prophet with all the prophets as well i guess they're all human they're not really they're not like um obviously they're superior than us as you know how clean like the cleanliness the yeah. you know spiritually but like they're obviously because they're human, how they think, they are going to have a few mistakes here and there. And so the Sahabas there were there for them to, you know, sometimes not just correct them, but just, you know, maybe show them a different point of view, I guess. Interesting. Yeah, that's what I get from okay. it. Okay. Well, what, what do you get from it? Well, our tradition says everything that is human, as you said, is open for discussion. Yeah. All right. Anything divine, the book of Allah, no. We hear and we'll be obey. Yeah. Okay. I'll give an example. Have, have you ever had scholars who give an interpretation and they say, if you, my opinion is wrong, throw it away. You know, take the Quran. Yeah. You get that. Yeah. So it's the same sort of thing where we're taught, for example, this, if we an analyze this hadith, the Sahabi says, is this from your God? So he's now first distinguishing the source. Where's this coming from? Mm hmm. Put your critical hat on now, all right? Yeah. So he's now saying, where's this source coming from? Then yeah. he's trying... He, yeah, yeah, knowing the source, then he makes his... No, then he's trying to understand the strategy. Okay, so now I know it's not from, now I know it's not from God, it's from you. Okay. Now tell me your strategy. Okay. All right, so now this is the strategy that we we're going to do. And he gets that by asking questions, mm -hmm. all right? And after he's taken what he wants from it, he then says, no, I differ. Okay. Respectfully, okay? Yeah. So there is an, an example of critical thinking. Okay. Some people may think, no, you cannot ask such and such a thing. It's just said and it's done. But no, there are various examples that you can see that the Prophet says on the matters of dunya, consult amongst yourselves. Mm. All right. So we are taught again to look at things and criticize them, analyze them. And from amongst us, produce the best people who, who can give us um, a better interpretation as to what needs to be done. Okay. Some people think that if you question, it shows you have less faith. Okay. All right. Yeah. I disagree. 
I think. Does the quality of your faith depend whether you accept things without questioning? Or does deep questions mean that you have a deeper faith? Mm. All right, because we're all different beings. Yeah. Some people, you know, like they say, the Quran's an ocean. Yeah. Some people can dive deep, bring out pearls. Some people are shallow swimmers. Some people are deep swimmers. Yeah. Find your find your reasoning. However, take it as critique. You know, learn to be be critical, and therefore, when you at- obtain the understanding. You can then communicate that to people better. So you could be a Michael Hart. You could be these great people who've said things, you know, Martin Lings, who've wrote things and have given their reasons as to why they've come to that conclusion. I'll give you an example. When you're given, when you're given a fatwa by an imam okay. or a shaykh, as Muslims, we have a duty to ask how did they come to that opinion? Because it's quite common that two people who have the same problem get a fatwa and come out and with different. totally different yeah. um, totally different um, answers yeah answers yeah the reason for that is because their context may be different hmm. so it's upon you upon everyone to uh, to get an understanding how did you come to that conclusion right right so the imam the sheikh should be criticizing right this is the hadith this is what it means this is the context right this is what it means to you this is how we're going to do it so and then you for you to be able to ask those questions okay yeah. Because, as we said, anything that is human is open, is open for interpretation. Yeah. All right. So it shouldn't be that you like a scholar, you like the way he sounds, you like the way he expresses, and so everything he says is right. This is also wrong. Mm-hmm. We need to be able to objectively look at an, a, a viewpoint and then think to ourselves, okay. Yeah. All right. The situation. There's another hadith for you. Wa'ad ibn Jabal. Okay, his famous uh, hadith when he went to Yemen. Okay. All right. So the Prophet sent him and said, right, spread Islam, again paraphrasing, yeah. to Yemen. Okay. So the, the hadith is quite lengthy, but there's three bits I want to home on. Um, he was asked, okay, by the Prophet, when you're giving these, yeah. um, when you're sharing the message of Allah and sharing the message of Islam to these people. How will you judge these people? Okay. Okay. And Muad ibn Jabal replies, according to what is in the book of Allah. Okay. Mm-hmm. The Prophet then asks again, what if it's not in the book of Allah? His response is, then with the tradition of the messenger of Allah. Mm-hmm. Are you, Ya Rasulullah? Okay. Yeah. Because another question, what if it's not in the tradition of the messenger of Allah? Then he says, I will strive to form an opinion. Okay? Okay. So, his source, Quran. His understanding, the Sunnah. If he can't, his Aqal. Okay. All right? So, there's a, there's, a, there's a way in which you are able, and he was praised for saying that. Yeah. He wasn't told off, mm-hmm. said no. He was praised for saying that. Okay? It just shows that when we're presented with certain things, the certain stages you should think exactly, about. and questioning and deep questioning and all of this is a part of our tradition. Yeah. All right. Something we need to get back into. The Quran often says about itself that it's come down to people who think and ponder and reflect. Okay. Yeah. So again, this is a question out there: How many people of us do that? Think, ponder, and reflect. Our book tells us to do. We've seen it in our tradition, all so much so that you know the West do that. All right. This is all critique and thinking, um, and I feel that it's not done as much. So when I quoted you George Bernard Shaw earlier on, I agree with that, right? Yeah. A lot of people are, are visionary, um, visionaries, I was going to say. Mm-hmm. They, they experience the world visually. Yeah. All right? There was a saying, do you remember the Karate Kid? Yeah. Okay. There was a scene in there where, n- not the old one, the new one. The new one, okay? yeah. Okay. So there's a scene in there where the little kid... He's getting beaten up. Mm. And then Jackie Chan comes in and he stops the fight. And then they start beating him up. Or this, they attempt to. And, yeah. he's, and he's fighting back and he's defending, all right? Yeah. And he's coming in and out of consciousness. All right, the kid's coming in and out of consciousness. Yeah. And then you see the fight. He ends the fight. And then he takes the kid. And he brings him home and he's like attaining to his injuries, Works, yeah. okay? When the kid wakes up, he looks at him and he goes, I thought you were just a janitor. 
right? Yeah. And then Jackie's response was, because you see with your eyes, you can easily be fooled. All right? Oh, yeah. So sometimes what we see, May Donald Trump, the, yeah. okay, example, Donald Trump being ten, all this and doing all of that, you're seeing him say this, you're seeing, and you think, wow, yeah, he's right. Brexit, all our politicians, you know, a lot of the stuff, and again, with the internet, the deep fake stuff, May what you're hearing, truth, yeah. is up for, it's up to, for questioning now. How far is how we as people, as individuals, doing our bit to critique the information that we're being given? Or are we one of those people that whenever we get a WhatsApp message, we forward it straight away without actually thinking, well, what are we what sending? What did you send you? All right. So it's, it's anal- each one has a responsibility. And I need to home this in because I don't see this done enough. Like We really need to be critical thinkers. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It takes effort. But that's a good thing. It defines you. You're chiseling at yourself again. It's a skill that you're attaining to yourself. And more and more people need to do this. You've got the handful of people that you see around the internet or, you know, who are doing these things. But it's a responsibility on everyone to not be fooled by what you see. Mm-hmm. And you do your, you do your, you, you do your thing, you know. Again, there's that like, when you look at the end of times, you know, there's a, there's a hadith on the, the, the jar. Right. That. He will come with a river and fire, but his mm. fire will be water, river, and his river will be fire. Fire, so it'll be the opposites. Yeah. How is someone meant to interpret that? If someone comes to you and you're visually and you see this, yeah. All right, you're going to be like, yeah, fine. But if you've done the analytics and the thinking and the pondering and the and, and the critiquing, you know, obviously everything's with the will of Allah at the end of the day. Yeah. But you stand a better chance in understanding who your who your enemy is. Yeah. Who you've been confronted by, okay? And these these are just um, thoughts I want to leave out there for this part of the episode, of the podcast. Um, I think we'll wrap it up there. But you know, what do you think? So, at the beginning with the critical thinking, so I do agree a hundred percent that we should actually um, we should actually have you know what the stages where we should actually think about you know what we are going to do make sure that you know you're 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 obviously not going to know exactly what your outcome is but you can have an idea you're not just going to go straight into it and then make a mistake and then everything's just going to fall apart Mm. you should always think and before you do something um and uh yeah more people should think critically it will help a lot more people and if you're doing it yourself then other people can learn from you um and when you're speaking about the leaders like we shouldn't just stay with their words um, like let's say they say something it may be wrong but because you have a certain you know you respect them in a certain way you may just say okay yeah this is this is right it could be but then you should always think about is you know you, you should uh, criticize it not in a bad way but you should um you know just get an understanding for yourself and see if you do agree if you don't agree then that's your opinion but then you understand yourself more better more doing it you'll understand what you actually what your opinions are. You don't form your opinions based on other people. Fair enough. But yeah, that's what I get from No, it. no, it's brilliant. It's very... Um, yeah. No, that was good. So, yeah, so, I mean, I, I don't want to differ from much what you said. Well, I, I can't really differ. I agree with what you're saying. But I just want to say a few more points just to say critical thinking is not negative. Yeah. You should do it. It's much needed in the times that we're in where everything is fake. A lot of things that are getting thrown around you need to really think and, and take what is what, 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 what have I watched, what have I listened to, okay? It's in your tradition, or it's in our tradition, and um, it opens your ability to be able to think more responsibly, and therefore when you're challenged by the right wing and claims are made, you can you, you hold choice, yourself yeah. well in a manner which our tradition would ask of us, but also you're able to rebuttal and you're able to take these these claims and deal with them in the appropriate way. But if we get emotional with everything, we hear something, then that's you fall in, you, 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 you know, you're not really critically thinking, you're just getting emotional, all right? Which yeah. is, can be, you know, it can be something that's used against you, all right? So yeah. we need more people to, you know, you, you obviously look visionary, you look for your eyes, but you need to think. Did, did, you know, is this happening for a reason? So 
when giving you those examples again with um, Ibrahim thrown in the fire. Yeah. Now he's expected to burn. Mm. He's not been told. All right. Allah commands the fire to be called for Ibrahim. Okay. Yeah. So it is, you know, so these are things where we take that, yes, we have an element of faith. We as Muslims have a default position that there are parts of our faith which we do not question. Mm. We accept. We accept we have a creator. We accept that there's going to be a day of judgment. We accept there's heaven and there's hell. We accept that there's um, the angels. We accept that the, the book of Allah is the guidance for us. We accept the stories that have been told in there are real. We accept these things. And then, how we deal with the world is we do it through critical thinking. We don't take everything openly, blindly, and just take it as it is. If people didn't do that with a prophet, then why are we doing that? Remember, first you find out your source. If it's the Quran, you, yeah. you know, you take it as it is. Yeah, you hear, you obey. If it's from the traditions, then you look at the interpretations. This is where you've got, like I said to you, you've got the uh, the argument of why certain imams said certain things and some didn't because it's based on context, interpretation, yeah. which is human. All right. So there is no right and wrong about that. It's just an inter and like I said, because this issues mostly my not smaller issues. Mm. What I'm trying to say is that we need to take more responsibility upon ourselves, think more deeply, um, and be more responsible with how we consume information, especially in this day and age. Day and age. All right. So I think we'll leave it to that. So yeah. it's been a pleasure. Iman, as usual. Thank you. Um, I just want to remind you guys, listen out there again. So you can listen to us via our website at www.minimalisticmuslim.com. You can also find us on Google Play, Spotify, um, iTunes. iTunes, which is Google Play, and all the other oh, podcasting yeah. <laughs> platforms. So check us out on there. And uh, until the next one, Assalamu alaikum. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.